Hi Dixons, I'm Mark Miller, Head of Bradford Research School and I'm here today at Dixon City Academy in our Teaching Institute building. Thanks for watching this video. Please do subscribe to our channel, like, comment and share using the hashtag Dixon's Open Source. Bradford Research School sits within the Dixon's Teaching Institute. We're proud to be part of the Research School network and to contribute to the role of evidence-informed teaching in Bradford and beyond. As a trust, we've benefited from the expertise that this has brought us through working in partnership with a range of organisations, with the EEF and with our colleagues in the Research Schools Network. And if you don't know where your local research school is, you'll find a link to the website in the details below. It's important as a trust that we make decisions based on more than just our gut feelings. We need to look at the best available evidence that can inform and refine what we do. We know that research can only tell us so much that it cannot replace professional expertise, but it can complement it and inform it. And this video introduces the role that evidence plays in our trust and will be followed with a series on how evidence from cognitive science is implemented in our academies. As you will have seen in our videos on aligned autonomy, we don't prescribe pedagogy, but we certainly do want our staff to use the best available evidence to inform their decisions around this. And this is why you'll find areas with a strong evidence base on the Dixon's backbone, from our focus on key findings from cognitive science, to managing attention with routines, to an emphasis on the literacy elements that will have the biggest impact. Just having them on the backbone is not enough. So if we take something that is on the backbone, say retrieval practice, it's important that we can communicate clearly why it's there, the evidence base that informs it, the optimal conditions for implementation, the active ingredients, the nuance, and the possible lethal mutations. And we have to acknowledge that the evidence base changes, so we need to stay current. But being evidence informed is more than just sharing the evidence. With autonomy in schools, it's crucial that school leaders are equipped to find the evidence, weigh it up, make decisions, and implement effectively. And if the research is held only in the centre, then there's a danger that we lose autonomy, innovation, and leave ourselves open to those lethal mutations. So to help, we've designed meta-messages. These are ways of thinking and are heavily influenced by the EEF's implementation guidance. And we promote these meta-messages explicitly with our teams, as well as implicitly through how we act. Evidence can help us to make decisions because as Sir Kevin Collins says, if we're not using evidence, what are we using? And we talk in terms of best bets rather than any guarantees. And we use the evidence along with our own professional judgment to decide what these best bets are. We focus on the how as well as the what, asking not just what works, but how it works. And this means identifying the active ingredients, the elements of an approach that are crucial to its success. We build a rich evidence picture by looking at more than just individual pieces of research in isolation. We know that we may be prone to biases, so it's important not to simply look for evidence that confirms our existing beliefs and remain open to that which challenges our thinking. Evidence includes our own school data and what our students and staff do. We use trusted sources because our time to read evidence is finite. Finding trusted sources who can explore, synthesize, curate, filter and communicate the evidence is crucial. These might be the research school, the EEF, the chartered college, subject or professional associations, academics, authors, and even our own Dixon's evidence leads. We explore the nuance looking beyond the surface, avoiding blanket statements that the evidence doesn't support. We know some things work well in one context, but not another, and the average effects hide nuance. And finally, implementation is key. We make evidence-informed decisions on what to implement and we're clear what we're looking to achieve by adopting a new programme or practice. And we systematically identify the right approach to achieve these goals and locate reliable evidence that it can have the desired impact if implemented well. And once we've codified the active ingredients of an approach, we clearly communicate these active ingredients and ensure that the approaches are delivered with fidelity. And in our cognitive science playlist, we'll share examples of this approach from our skills. I hope you find this video useful. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel, and I look forward to seeing you soon.